Howdy folks, my name is Javier and welcome back to Tool Craze. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look at some cordless outdoor power equipment. Cordless is in no need for gasoline and no need for extension cords. What I'm talking about is battery powered equipment. We're going to take a look at a few brushless outdoor power tools from Eagle. Starting off with their new brushless 21 inch self propelled lawnmower. Yup, you heard right, this thing can push itself as it cuts grass. And we're also going to take a look at their new powerful brushless leaf blower with 530 CFMs and their latest brushless string trimmer with a dual line 15 inch cutting swath. So the big question off the bat is, why go cordless when it comes to outdoor power equipment? Well, one of those reasons is that they save you lots of money in the long run, as you don't have to go out and buy gasoline, and you don't have to buy oil to mix with the gasoline. This saves you lots of money in the long run on consumables that you have to buy over and over each and every year. Obviously, you still have to pay for the electricity that you use to charge your batteries, but it's next to nothing when compared to the price of gasoline and oil. And the additional cost of more gasoline that takes you to the store to buy more gasoline and more oil. Plus you don't have to mix the two together to make sure you get the correct ratio. And another reason is, is that there's no hassle with starting these machines. You don't have to mess around with yanking a cord all day long just to get them started as all of these machines start with just the press of a button. Then there's also electrical lawn equipment that's pretty much the same in this regard. But with those machines, you have to plug them in, which means that they require an extension cord. And I don't know about you guys, but I hate messing around with extension cords. And the same thing goes with electric lawn equipment. As I don't like messing around with extension cords, I don't like tripping hazards, I don't even want to look at them. And another benefit of cordless outdoor power equipment is that there's hardly any maintenance involved. There's no need for tune-ups, you don't have to check oil levels, there's no spark plugs to replace, and there's no gasoline engines that need to be rebuilt. So cordless battery powered outdoor power equipment comes in all sorts of battery voltages. And on the lower end, they start off with 18 and 20 volts, then 24, 36 and 40 volts, and they go all the way up to 80 volts. And typically, we can expect more power with the higher the voltages. And in some cases, we can actually get more runtime depending on the size batteries that they use. These Eagle cordless outdoor power tools are in the upper voltage range with their 56 volt batteries. And this puts them right there with direct competition from Works, which also uses 56 volt batteries, and competition from Eco with their 58 volt line. One of the things that I like about Eco is that their batteries charge very fast. Some of the other outdoor power tool brands will have you waiting for hours for their batteries to charge. But the batteries that came included with these Eco power tools were either one hour for their huge 7.5 amp hour battery, or less with their 2.5 amp hour battery at 50 minutes with its charger that came with the blower. So these charge times are a huge improvement over some of the other cordless outdoor power tool brands. Although I will say that the competing brand Echo has similar charge times for their batteries at about an hour or less for their batteries. Also interesting about their batteries are that they have a built-in battery indicator on the top to give you the status of the battery. It's not what I would call a battery fuel gauge as it doesn't have three or four bars like some of the other batteries to let you know the charge amount left. Instead, they give you a large status button on top, and when pressed, it either turns green to let you know that you have 15% or more of the charge left, or it turns red to let you know that the batteries are about to die and that it needs to be recharged. So now that we've talked a little about the benefits of cordless lawn equipment and a little about the batteries, let's go over the tools that you guys have been wanting to take a look at, starting off with the new brushless 21-inch self-propelled lawnmower. The obvious standout feature of this new model is, is that it's self-propelled and they integrated an extra lever right over here at the handle that controls a self-propelled feature. The lever acts as an on-off switch to move the mower forward, and you can also control the speed with the variable speed lever right over here. And on the highest speed setting, it's actually pretty fast. It's about the speed of power walking, and if that's too fast for you, you can always tone it down to a slower speed. And this mower is a rear wheel drive mower meaning that the back two wheels have the power to move the mower forward and they can also move the mower forward even when it's turning and provide better traction compared to front wheel drive mowers. 
This new mower also comes with a larger 21 inch deck giving it a slightly larger cutting path of an extra inch compared to the original Eagle mower. I never tried the original Eagle mower so I can't say if it's stronger or not, but typically when power tools get larger capacities, they usually have the extra power to back up that extra capacity. So going over the mower's features, one thing that I found to be interesting, different but interesting, was that the battery compartment has a slot for only one battery. Most of the cordless lawnmowers I've seen have compartments to hold two batteries. And the reasoning behind this is so that you can set the mower to run off the second battery so you can keep going after the first battery dies. So the fact that this mower only has one battery compartment can either mean that Eagle made a huge mistake or that possibly their battery has enough juice to get the job done without the need of extra batteries. So I'll let you guys know in a bit when I go over its performance. Another interesting feature on this mower are the two built-in headlights. They don't automatically turn on when you run the mower, which is a good thing since I wouldn't want them wasting battery juice during the day when I don't need lights. There's a little button on the back of the motor compartment, which lets you turn them on as needed. And right next to that button is a power indicator light that tells you the battery status and it stays lit the entire time you're mowing so you can monitor its power level. The mower uses large oversized tires to move about. The front wheels are fixed so that they can only go forward and back and they don't swivel left and right like the new works mower does, which means that you have to lift the front wheels to turn the mower. It's not a big deal since we've all been using mowers with all four wheels being fixed, but it would have been nice if they did make the front wheels swivel so that the mower could turn easily without having to be picked up. And to raise and lower the wheels to change the cutting height of the mower, you can move this knob right here and set it to number one for the lowest cutting height, and you can move it higher with each number, with six being the highest cutting height. It comes with a bag to capture all your grass clippings so you don't have to come back and rake everything up. And Eagle says that this is a 3-in-1 mower for mulching, bagging, and side discharge. While this is true, it's not entirely true out of the box. Out of the box you can use the included bag or you can mulch. But you can't side discharge as is. You're going to need a separate accessory if you want to side discharge grass clippings. It says on the box that it's available upon request, but I'm not sure if it's free or if you have to pay extra for the side discharge accessory. So just keep that in mind if you need the side discharge function. It's not a negative for me as all I'm really interested in is the bagging function. So big props for including a bag. I hated those days many years ago when I had a mower that didn't have a bag and I had to rake everything up when I was done cutting the grass. And moving on to the handle, one of the things that I really like about it is that it collapses and it folds forward to save space in your garage when it comes time to store it. And in its compact state, you can move it upright so it hardly takes up any space in your garage. This is a huge bonus for me in my opinion, as space is a premium here in my garage. So the fact that it can fold to save space is a huge lifesaver. And when you are using the handle, you can fold it into three different positions for people of varying heights. And in its highest position, it's a bit high for me, so I feel more comfortable to push the mower in the middle height setting. But if you're very short or you have small kids, the lowest setting is perfect for that. Unlike many other cordless lawnmowers, I like that Eagle ditched those retarded keys you had to carry around with you just so you can power on your cordless lawnmower. With their mower, you don't need a key. Just you, the mower itself, and the battery is all you need just to get started. They did, however, incorporate a safety button that you must press and hold down before finally squeezing the lever at the handle to start the mower. They also incorporated a safety feature that won't let you start the mower unless you have the handle in the unfolded position and it must be extended and locked into place before finally starting the mower. And this mower comes with a huge 7.5 amp hour battery. Not only is it a physically large battery, but that's mainly because of all the cells inside combined to make 56 volts. What's impressive about it is its huge 7.5 amp hour capacity. This is in a time when most coilless power tools are barely coming out with 6 amp hour batteries. And this mower comes with Eagle's best charger that'll charge this huge battery in an hour, which to me is impressive considering its large capacity. Eagle also came out with a similar 21 inch mower that's pretty much the same thing as this model except that it's not self-propelled and it also comes with a slightly smaller capacity 5 amp hour battery. So you have two new Ego 21 inch mowers, one that's self-propelled 
and one that's just a regular push mower. The self-propelled model will run you $599, while the regular push mower will run you $499. And this is so you have more options as not everyone needs a self-propelled feature, and you can save yourself some money as well. Alrighty, so now let's move on to its performance. So when you power on the machine, the first thing that I noticed was how little noise it makes. This is way quieter than any other gas mower I've ever heard. The motor itself is quiet as it's running, and the only thing I can hear are the blades turning. Another thing about the motor when it starts up is that it's actually spinning at minimal speed. There's very little vibration, and you can feel that the motor is taking it very easy. But yet it can still cut grass at this low speed. Here on this lawn, we can see that with its low speed setting, it can cut grass without a problem. But keep in mind that this grass isn't that tall, and it isn't that thick. But nonetheless, the motor had no issue whatsoever. But how does this machine do in thicker, longer grass? I then headed to the backyard with much longer, thicker grass to check it out. And for the most part, it was able to handle the grass with no problem, but there were some sections where it was very thick. When the mower would go over the very thick areas, the blade would slow down slightly, and then the mower did something amazing. Just when I thought the mower was about to bog down, the mower goes into overdrive. The machine starts running on all cylinders, and you can tell it was, as now the machine was louder, the blades were spinning faster, and you can tell this mower wasn't messing around. So long story short, it tore that tall, thick grass up. It was very impressive how much power comes out of this machine when it encounters thick, long grass. The only other mowers I've tried in the past were a few gas mowers, and they always turned the blade at a constant speed, and when I would go over thick areas, the motor would bog down if I moved too fast. Not with this mower. Instead, it provides more power on demand when the going gets tough. And it actually seems to have more power than the budget gas mowers I've tried in the past. But the cool thing about this mower is that when it's running at full power, and then you go over thinner sections of grass, the mower notices a difference, and it'll go back down to its minimal speed so that it's not wasting extra battery power when it's not needed. And remember those headlights in the front? Well, just for fun, I decided to mow my lawn at 8 p.m. at nighttime. At first, I thought the lights were a bit gimmicky, but they actually give off a good amount of light. They light up a few feet in front of the mower and is just bright enough so you can see where you're going. Sure, the streetlights did help me out when I was mowing at nighttime, but when I took the mower to the side of the house where the streetlights can't reach, it gets very dark over here. But I was able to see just fine with these headlights. So thanks to the built-in lights, I was able to successfully cut my front yard at nighttime with good visibility and because the mower doesn't make much noise. I didn't get any angry neighbors telling me to stop doing yard work at nighttime. Also the self-propelling function works just as it should, making it so you don't have to push the weight of the mower. It worked very well when I tried it, but for the most part it wasn't needed because my front yard and backyard is relatively flat. The mower itself isn't hard to push manually, and even when the bag is almost full I thought it was very easy to push manually. So the self-propelled feature is not something that I need to use. It does come in handy for when going uphill, and I very much appreciated not having to push the mower up an incline. You don't feel the weight of the mower on flat surfaces, but you'll feel it when you're going uphill. So I would definitely suggest the mower with this feature if there are lots of inclines in your yard. The self-propelling feature is also good for those that have physical limitations and pushing a mower would otherwise be too difficult. So Ego says that this mower will get up to 60 minutes of runtime and that's what it says out of the box. If you look at the manual, it says you can get anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes depending on the grass conditions. 30 minutes for a heavy load, 45 for a medium load, and 60 minutes for a light load. But that's if you're using the large 7.5 amp hour battery. If you use a 5.0 amp hour battery that comes with a 21 inch push mower, you can expect around 20 minutes on a high load, 30 minutes for a medium load, and 45 minutes on a light load. So what kind of runtime did I get? Well, since I have the 7.5 amp hour battery, I'm obviously gonna get more runtime than the 5 amp hour battery. And the first time I was counting the runtime on the battery, I forgot to stop my stopwatch when I wasn't using the mower. But I was able to redo the test again, and according to my stopwatch, this mower ran for 69 minutes on a full charge. So on a full charge, I was able to cut three of my neighbor's front yards and my own front and backyard before the battery finally gave out. And to give you an idea of how large properties are here in my neighborhood, they're not. They average around seven to 9,000 square feet for the land itself. And you can do the math and subtract for the home itself, the driveway, sidewalks, back patio, and so forth. 
To give you an idea of how much yard area is left for the front and back yard. So I got very nice front time out of this machine, actually better than expected. But you guys do have to remember that this was with grass that wasn't very thick, a bit dry, and it wasn't that long to begin with. So under worse conditions, you can expect to get less run time than I did. But just keep in mind that my run time of 69 minutes was done mostly with me manually pushing the mower. I maybe used a self-propelled feature for less than a minute, so for the most part I didn't let the mower push itself. I would imagine you'd get considerably less run time if you do use a self-propelled feature most of the time or all the time. So remember when I was talking about the battery compartment can only take one battery at a time, when other coilless lawnmowers can take two batteries? My question was if this was a good or a bad idea. And with the kind of runtime I got out of this machine, after all I did mow my lawn and the front lawn of three of my neighbor's homes on a single battery. My answer is no, it doesn't need the extra battery slot for another battery. I can mow my own lawn twice on one battery so it's not necessary to need an extra battery or the extra slot to store one. It's not needed and would I want to make the mower bulkier to add another compartment? No way. So overall there are plenty of things that I liked about this mower. It has amazing power for a cordless lawn mower and it actually has more power than the budget gas mowers that I've tried in the past. It's very power efficient as I was able to get over an hour's worth of runtime on a single battery charge. I like the built in headlights as you can cut your grass at night time and it's also a lot quieter than a gasoline mower. And the self propelled feature works as it should. However, there were a few things that I wasn't too crazy about. First of all, I didn't like how the batteries indicate the remaining battery charge. Instead of giving you a regular fuel gauge with either four or three bars, it'll show you either a green light or a red light. And you would assume that green means you still have plenty of power left, right? Well, I found out that that wasn't always the case. Right before the battery died, I was about to start a cut on a neighbor's yard. And before I did, I checked the battery to see how I was doing on battery life and the battery gave me a green light. So I would assume I was good to go. But then after I started cutting, it quickly went to red and then gave out a few seconds later. Obviously this was after I had over an hour on the battery and I knew it was very drained, but I assumed I still had several minutes left because of the green light, but it didn't. The battery indicator isn't very accurate and I would prefer a traditional fuel gauge with either three or four bars, which would be a much better representation of remaining battery instead of just the green and red lights. A few times when I did use a battery, it did give me a red light before using and to me that was a good indicator to not even start the project and that I needed a charge as soon as possible. My next dislike is that this mower on the lowest height setting is about a quarter to a half inch higher than I would have liked. For the most part, on thick lawns this isn't a problem, it actually looks pretty nice. But on thinner lawns or where grass is patchy, I would have preferred about a half inch lower for a better look. All right, so now let's move on to the new 530 CFM brushless blower. The new blower gets a new design and they open up the back of the blower so that air can enter the sides of the rear part of the blower. I really like this new design because on other blowers that I've tried in the past, I wasn't crazy about the intake part of the blower being at the rear of the blower. And this is because a lot of times, if I got the blower too close to my shirt or to my pants, many times some of my clothing will actually get sucked in and clog in the intake tube which means that the blowing performance gets reduced. So with this new design, I like that you don't have to worry about your clothes being sucked in if you get the blower too close to your clothing. Out of the box, the blower comes as two pieces with the main body and the blower tube. And the first thing you want to do out of the box is to attach the blower tube to the body. And with a freshly charged battery, plug it in and you're all set. The blower itself is very, very light. It doesn't weigh much at all because of its lightweight plastic construction, but most of the weight does come from the battery pack itself. Overall, it's still pretty light, even with the battery installed, but yet it's still noticeably heavier than some of the 18 and 20 volt blowers I've tried out in the past, but it's not heavier by much. I happened to get this blower as a kit, and it includes a compact, if you want to call this big battery compact anyways, 2.5 amp hour battery and their lower end charger. Now, I don't want to call this a slow charger, since it can recharge this battery in 50 minutes and that's still much faster recharging than some of the other brands, but it is their slower charger. If you want the faster charger, you're going to have to purchase the mower to get that one. It's also a bit smaller and less featured than the charger that comes with the lawnmower, as it doesn't show you the current charge state of the battery. It just lets you know it's charging and when it's done. There is one good thing about the slower charger over the faster model, and that's that it's much quieter when charging 
as the internal fans are very loud on the faster charger. And as a kit with a battery and charger, you're looking at a full price of $199 for the kit with the battery and charger. Or if you only need the blower by itself, it'll run you for $129 with the bear tool. So other than the new redesign of the blower, it operates very simply. You have an on off switch that's very easy to reach right inside of the handle. And you can operate the speed of the blower using a lever right here in the front. Moving it to the left makes it go slower with a low speed of 260 CFMs at 50 miles per hour. And moving it to the right makes it go faster at up to 400 CFM and 85 miles per hour. So under normal operation, you won't be getting the 530 CFMs of blowing power. And that's where this button up top comes in. This bad boy is a turbo button. When you press this sucker, you better hold on tight because you just unleashed 530 CFMs at 110 miles per hour. I thought it was a bit weird that the full speed on the speed control lever doesn't go up to the full rated speed of 530 CFMs and why they went with an additional turbo button to get the max speed. My guess is that they probably did this to conserve battery runtime. Of course, everyone's going to want to go at the max speed all the time, but if you do, you're going to kill the batteries in just 10 minutes. That's actually what it says on the manual with only 10 minutes for the turbo mode. But if you look at the box, it says you can get up to 75 minutes with the included battery. But that's when you're using the lowest speed. If you're using the highest speed on the lever without using the turbo button, you can achieve a respectable 22 minutes. So I got to try this bad boy out on my lawn, and of course I went straight for that turbo mode. And man, does this thing blow. It pushes so much air out that it actually forces your arm backwards. You have to actually hold on tight so it doesn't blow your arm off. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I think you guys get the point. Up to this point, all the cordless blowers I've tried have been 18 and 20 volt. Although those were pretty good, the max performance on this sucker is night and day compared to those other models. I'm able to blow away leaves without mercy and at a much further distance as well. But because the turbo mode kills the batteries very quickly, you're most likely going to be using the highest speed to get most of your work done. Here you have the performance of high end 18 and 20 volt blowers, which is very good actually, in this high setting, I found I can get just about everything done that I would expect from a blower. That is with the exception of stuck on leaves or very wet leaves and grass clutter. And this blower on its lowest speed is also very effective for blowing things on hard flat surfaces. For example, dry leaves or grass clippings were very easy to push around in my concrete driveway. So if you have hard surfaces and you want to get the most out of your blower, you might want to use a low setting as much as possible for the most runtime. In my runtime test, I used the blower mostly into the highest speed setting on the lever, and this was because I felt that most people will use this setting most of the time. I did however use a boost a few times, and also use a low speed setting for a few short periods. But like I said, I use a high speed without turbo boost most of the time. And under these conditions, I achieved 19 minutes of runtime, which is pretty close to the state of 22 minutes of runtime on high. I would say that this runtime is about average when compared to some of the other coils blowers that I've tried. But remember, you can always get way more runtime than this if you stick to the lowest speed setting. As far as how much work can get done, I'm able to blow leaves, the straw that falls down from one of the trees in my front yard, and push and clean just about everything else in my driveway and backyard within one battery charge. So overall, this is a very nice and powerful blower. So far, it's the most powerful I've tried, but that's also because I've only tried high performance, 18 and 20 volt blowers up to this point. But even when compared to other 56 and 58 volt blowers, on paper, this does offer a bit more CFMs. And just for comparison, you can expect around 465 CFMs at 125 miles per hour from the Works Air 56 volt blower and 450 CFMs at 120 miles per hour from the Echo 58 volt blower. And it doesn't get much better on 80 volts from either Greenworks or Cobalt, as they both offer less CFMs at 500 CFMs, but a little bit more speed at 125 miles per hour. I don't really have any negatives for the blower other than I'd rather see a variable speed trigger as that's what I'm used to, instead of the on off button with a separate variable speed lever. But that's just a matter of personal choice. I might prefer a variable speed trigger and someone else might prefer the setup that this blower has. Another nitpick that I have is, I'd like to see Eagle include a larger battery pack like the 5.0 so that I can get double the runtime on full blast turbo mode and maybe get around 20 minutes on turbo. But the larger battery would make the tool heavier, but I think that would be a nice trade-off. 
but this isn't something that I'd like to see exclusively for only Eagles Blower. I would like to see this on just about every other cordless company out there that makes a cordless blower because they all come with a 2 or a 2.5 amp hour battery out of the box. And we're almost done here folks. Now we're going to move on to Eagle's latest brushless string trimmer. And just like the new blower and the new lawnmower, this new model has also been upgraded and improved compared to the previous model. And the biggest difference is that it now uses a larger 15 inch cutting swath compared to the 12 inches on the previous model. And just like the previous model, it's also a dual line string trimmer. And not only does it have a larger cutting swath, but it also uses larger, beefier, 0.095 inch thick line instead of the thinner 0.080 inch thick line used on the previous model. I didn't notice that this string trimmer actually comes in two variations. The ST1500 model, which is a straight shaft model, and the ST1500S, which is a hinge shaft model, which is the one that I received. Both models have straight shafts, but the straight shaft model is a one piece shaft, whereas the hinge shaft model has a hinge so you can fold the whole thing in half for better storage. I'd prefer a solid one piece design, but even with the hinge, it still feels moderately solid for the most part. Although there is a bit of a flex due to the hinge, but it doesn't affect performance. It's still very solid, but certainly doesn't feel as solid as a single piece shaft. One thing that I noticed on this new model is that it looks to be a bit less homeowner friendly as they did away with the metal wire guard at the head of the trimmer that came with the previous model. The reason that was there on the previous model was to help unexperienced users to use a string trimmer as an edger to cut the edges from your lawn. This new model does away with that extra aid, so it might take some extra getting used to using this new string trimmer if you're not used to using a string trimmer as an edger without those extra training wheels. And I previously reviewed Works' 56 volt string trimmer and that string trimmer came with a pair of training wheels to help you get consistent results when edging. They also gave you a handle that would turn a quarter of a turn so they can get a better angle when edging your lawn. And there are no training wheels on this Eagle string trimmer. And because they did away with those extra training wheels, this trimmer is geared towards more experienced users. And that's not exactly a bad thing as it just sheds excess weight in the form of unnecessary aids that can get in the way and may seem gimmicky for experienced users. I did like that they went with a more traditional bump feed system on the string trimmer head to feed extra line. You just smack the bottom trimmer head on the floor as it's spinning and that's all you need to feed more line. I also like the included handle that came with the string trimmer as it's nice and padded with a nice foam grip. This is just as nice as the handle that came with the DeWalt 20 volt string trimmer that I tried a while back and more comfortable than the hard plastic handle on the Works 56 volt string trimmer. One thing that I do miss from the work string trimmer that isn't on this trimmer is that the head on the Eagle trimmer doesn't tilt for various angles. That was a very good feature on the works as you could tilt the head so you can reach under low hanging trees or bushes or even something like an outdoor bench. Not only was it useful for that, but it also let the user choose the best angle for their height. On this Eagle trimmer, the angle is almost perfect for daily use, except because I'm a bit shorter than most people. I find that the angle was designed for people of average height. And because of this, I can let the string trimmer hang on my arm so I don't get tired as fast. Because the angle at the front of the trimmer would be too high. So to compensate for this, I have to raise my back arm as I operate the string trimmer the entire time. So that I can get the front of the string trimmer at the correct angle with the grass. But because I have to raise my back arm the entire time I'm using the string trimmer, my arm ends up getting tired quicker than it should. So I either grow a couple of inches so I can be at the right height for the string trimmer, or if I could just change the angle on the head, just the bit would be better. But unfortunately I can't. As a whole, the string trimmer's weight is pretty good as it's pretty lightweight, since the shaft is made of a very lightweight material. And if I had a guess, I'd say it's probably aluminum on the shaft, and the string trimmer as a whole has a nice balance to it, as it's not front heavy, and it's not overly back heavy. Unlike the DeWalt 20 volt string trimmer that I tried in the past, this Eagle model uses a single speed with a variable speed trigger. So you can press it lightly to go slow and get better runtime, or you can press it down all the way for full speed, or throttle it anywhere in between to vary the cutting speed. And like all the other cordless trimmers, this one also has a safety switch that gets pressed simply by gripping the trimmer, so it doesn't feel like you have to do anything extra to start the trimmer other than the main trigger. And as for performance, just like the other two Eagle machines, this string trimmer's power was also impressive. 
When I first got this trimmer, the first thing that I did was take it to my local school and cut some weeds that were out of control. I did this just to see how much power it has, and just like the mower, it tore them all up and made quick work out of them. These weeds had some very thick stalks and I thought for sure the trimmer would bog down and stall. But it put up a hard fight and these weeds lost. Not only did it cut them down, but what was amazing was that the string trimmer didn't seem to slow down when using full speed. Actually, the only thing that slowed down the string trimmer was when the whole weed plant would fall down and get caught up in the spinning string. But other than that, it just kept on going. I've only tried a couple of cordless string trimmers up to this point. One was a DeWalt 20 volt and the other was a Works 56 volt. The DeWalt 20 volt was very nice and powerful for a 20 volt and I liked that it had the dual lines. And the Works 56 volt only has one line, but it was easily more powerful than the DeWalt. Both have 13 inch cutting swaths and compared to this new Eagle 56 volt 15 inch string trimmer, there's a huge difference between the two. You get the benefits of the larger 15 inch cutting swaths and considerably more power. And as for runtime, I was able to get 25 minutes with the 2.5 amp hour battery while using the string trimmer at full speed the whole time. 25 minutes is about as good as the other two. A couple of minutes more, but very close. And for those of you that may not think 25 minutes is much runtime, you have to keep in mind that I only count the time the trimmer is running. So if I run the mower for three minutes at a time and stop, I only count three minutes and not the break in between uses. Then I add up all the time in the end for the grand total of 25 minutes. When using the trimmer, 25 minutes is a very long time and you can get a lot of work done in that time frame. I'm able to get my front and backyard edged and still have about half the battery left over so I can edge my lawn for the next week. And I almost forgot to mention that I got this string trimmer as a bare tool, meaning no extra battery or charger was included. I already have the other two batteries and chargers from the mower and from the blower. If you get this string trimmer as a bare tool, it'll run you about $129. And you can also get it as a kit with a two amp hour battery and charger for $179 or $199 with a 2.5 amp hour battery and charger. So overall, I'm very impressed with the performance of this cordless Eagle string trimmer as it's considerably better than the previous models that I've tried in the past and it put up a good strong fight against some nasty weeds. It's runtime is about average, but once you factor in that it has extra power to go along with this tool, it'll make you wonder how they managed to keep the runtime good while increasing the power. And normally with cars, the MPG goes down as the horsepower goes up, but that's just not the case with this string trimmer. And I felt that the weight, the bounce, and the ergonomics were pretty good. Although I would like to see if the string trimmer head could tilt so I can change the cutting angle to my liking. And that's pretty much it for this review. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and a big thumbs up to you guys for making it this far. Thanks for liking and subscribing and don't forget to follow me on social media over at Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus and over at the web at toolcraze.net for more tool reviews, tool news, and tool deals. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.